very much, Carol. Uh, for our next guest, uh, pregnancy meant being unable to eat or drink, being admitted to hospital with severe dehydration and living off anti-sickness medication. Charlotte Howden suffered from a severe morning sickness, the same type that you might have heard the Duchess of Cambridge experienced during her three pregnancies. Charlotte now wants the condition to be taken more seriously and she's made a documentary all about it. We'll speak to her in a moment, but first let's have a look at that film. No one really believes you or can fully empathise or comprehend the extremity of it all. Made to feel like you're failing or you already failed as a mum. Weak physically, weak spiritually, just weak. And super isolating. For me, it was 10 weeks in a dark room. I was housebound, so I couldn't go to work, I couldn't look after my child, and even to go to the doctors was a, a struggle. And to think that that was going to be my life, potentially for nine months, really was the time when we thought, we're not going to be able to do this. We just wouldn't want to put our relationship and the rest of our family through that again, which is sad because you often get asked whether you want to have more children and um, the answer is always no. Well, let's talk about uh, some of those issues with Charlotte Howden, um, who made that documentary and consultant obstetric physician, Dr Catherine Nelson Piercy. Morning, both. Thank you so Morning. much for joining us. Um, Charlotte, I'll come Morning. to your story in a moment because, you know, this is something you suffered from severely. But just tell us, first of all, uh, Dr Catherine Nelson Piercy, what is this and how many people suffer from it? Good morning. Um, well, this is hyperemesis gravidarum is the severe end of the spectrum of nausea, vomiting and pregnancy. And the problem is that a lot of people think that because 50, 60 percent of women suffer some nausea or some vomiting, that even the severe form is normal. But it isn't. It's it's completely debilitating. It affects one to two percent of all pregnant women. And it completely miserable condition that can ruin their lives, as, as your clip has demonstrated. Mm. Well, let's find out a bit more about what Charlotte's experience was. Um, Charlotte, when did you sort of first hear about this condition and what was your own experience of it? Good morning. Um, to be honest, um, I didn't really even get an actual diagnosis of this condition um, with my pregnancy. Um, and I certainly hadn't heard of this um, um, before I was pregnant and during my pregnancy. Um, my experience was that I was um, eventually diagnosed with severe hyperemesis gravidarum and really from seven weeks pregnant I was hit with such a severe nausea and debilitating, unrelenting um, vomiting to the point where I would lose count as to how many times I had been sick that day. Um, I really, I, I became very isolated and bed bound very quickly and within my own household everything and anything would be a trigger for me. So smells, sounds, something as simple as somebody opening a door would make me feel sick. And I really very quickly fell into quite a very dark um, and deep depression. Um, and you, in the documentary, you talk to many other women affected by it. And that is one of the things a lot of them seem to say it affects not just physically, but also psychologically, obviously, as well. Yes, very much so. I mean, if you can try and imagine what it's like to be isolated in your own home to the point where, you know, even my own husband wasn't able to, to even talk to me and have the very basic needs taken away from you. So the ability to eat, um, in my experience and um, with the condition that I had being on the severe end, um, it got to the point where I wasn't able to keep water down. Um, I couldn't talk to my friends and family. I couldn't watch TV. Um, even brushing my own teeth was impossible. So that it's not too difficult to see why someone would be very mentally affected by those things. Yeah, um, and Doctor, listening to what um, sort of Charlotte's experience of it, where she she wasn't uh, diagnosed, I, I'm, I imagine that many women find themselves in the same situation, and it can often be sort of dismissed as as just morning sickness. Absolutely. Sadly, we hear stories like Charlotte's. Um, more often than I would like, um, people are, women are dismissed, oh, it'll pass, oh, 
you know, just uh, you eat something, something will stay down. They don't realise the degree of, of, of complete desperation that these women can feel. And, and as has also been said, women feel like a failure. They're at a time of their life when they feel they're pregnant, they're happy, uh, they should be blooming, and they feel absolutely at the, at, at the lowest ebb ever. And um, doctors and other healthcare professionals really need to take this condition seriously. It is treatable, and women don't need to suffer. Um, and it, it upsets me when I hear and I, when I hear these stories. Um, and Charlotte, does it? Um, we know that the Duchess of Cambridge, for example, um, suffered from it as well. Does that help with at least awareness of what's going on? Um, it does, yes, um, and it's a bit strange, I suppose, within the high premises community. We're always um, hoping and wishing that she will get pregnant again because then we know there will be this big media buzz and hype. But ultimately, when that dies down, we're still left as a community with, you know, being dismissed by our GPs, not being believed and not getting timely access to medication when we desperately need it. To, to both of you, really, if, if somebody is watching this morning thinking, you know, maybe they need help. What would your advice be, Charlotte? We'll come to you on that first. Yeah, I think um, as um, Dr. Kathy Nelson Pierce has already said, you know, you will know when something's not normal. It is difficult, especially when you are a first time mum, because you don't have a frame of reference as to what usual pregnancy sickness should be. But, you know, if you're not able to function normally like you were before you were pregnant, you need to get help. So do reach out to your GP. If you feel like you've been dismissed or you're not being believed, then there is a wonderful charity, the Pregnancy Sickness Support Charity. They have a helpline, um, a live chat function and a peer support network. Um, and they will really be able to help you to, to advocate for yourself and to, to get the help you need. And Dr Catherine, your response? My response is I agree completely with what Charlotte said. There are guidelines. Um, um, issued by the Royal College of, College of Obstetricians and Gynaecologists to manage this condition. Early pregnancy units have protocols for managing this. So if, if women and GPs are, we spend a lot of time educating GPs and, and in my experience, GPs are getting much better at being willing to prescribe anti-sickness drugs. So if, go to your GP, ask them for anti-sickness medication. And um, if that doesn't work if, or if you're very dehydrated, go to your early pregnancy gynaecology unit and they have protocols to follow for intravenous rehydration and for anti-sickness drugs. And there are lots of anti-sickness drugs that are compatible with use in pregnancy that are not dangerous for the fetus. Women worry, doctors worry about prescribing drugs in pregnancy, but this is an area where so much research has been done into the safety of those drugs that we're very confident that they can be given without harming the baby. So the woman shouldn't be afraid to take treatment and the doctor shouldn't be afraid to prescribe the treatment. There is help out there. Don't feel alone, feel empowered, if, you, if at first you don't succeed, go, go ask help through the PSS, the Pregnancy Sickness Support, as Charlotte says, or a different GP or a different doctor, and you, you should and you will get help. Well, listen, I really appreciate both your time, but Dr Catherine...